Just because everyone says the same thing doesn't make it true, right? Today I want to uh, tackle a myth about self-love that overall hasn't really been helping people who are struggling with it, I noticed. This idea has been around since forever and it's all about you don't need others as much as you need to first and foremost love and take care of yourself first. Except data has shown that depression, loneliness, yes, it affects young people more, but across generations, it's all getting worse. So what's up with this magical advice that's been around forever? You've probably heard it a million, ti- a million times. You need to love yourself first before anyone can love you. How many times you heard that in movies and TVs from therapists? This idea that self-love is a must before finding love is widely accepted, but rarely questioned. Even though there are no real data to support it, it's something we like to believe is true because it gives us a sense of control. But we have no proof on the grand scale that, on the grand scheme of things, that it it, it is how it works. And by self-love, out of acceptance, care, and it goes more and more intimately from there. So first off, anyone who truly loves themselves wouldn't say you need to be, at least these are my opinion of course, anyone who truly loves themselves wouldn't say you need to be an independent island before being loved. They know that we all need love and putting that on hold isn't realistic or healthy. Also, the idea that there is a strict line between self and others just isn't true. We're all connected, right? So every kind of love is in a way connected and in in a way self-love or love by others. The way we love is influenced by so many things on how we express love, what is love, throw social media in there. I nature of love is interpreted a thousand ways to Sunday. And then there is the over oversimplified love of law of, of, of a law of attraction version. It ignores how complex each person's vibes and uh, individual attributes are. For instance, just desiring to be loved attracts love. And this is a very fundamental idea, I think, in love in law of attraction, if you just purely focus on that. And, and it's not about loving every part of yourself first, but you need to love a decent part of yourself. But real life isn't that straightforward. Also, the whole love yourself before you can be loved thing can also be a way to avoid sometimes dealing with past traumas. It is like pretending you are an island that doesn't need anyone else, which can feel safe, but it can also feel lonely and you might be true and yet you might be hiding something more sinister that you not you may not want to uh, face and for some even more real talk loving oneself in the way that's a little bit more profound and deeper than the typical society way of talking about love is a lifelong journey it's not a one-time achievement it's not a you just woke up one day and you suddenly had a night and day in your consciousness. It involves embracing every part of, your, of yourself, even the parts you are struggling with. And honestly, it's tough. Self-love isn't a precondition for finding love. It's something that grows and evolves over your life with your love and other people's love together. It's also key to remember that often learning to love yourself comes from being loved by others. How many times have you are really insecure or dislike uh, some aspect yourself, but then you, then you met a special someone and by spending time with them, you start to see yourself in a completely different light and you start to love yourself in a way that you didn't think was possible. That's completely in contrary to this idea of love yourself first, right? 
So love by others, love by yourself. The difference is 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 it's a gradient. It's not quite a black and white. If we couldn't learn to love things about ourselves from how others treat us, a lot of us would be probably stuck in at worst self hate, at best self apathy, or maybe even just uh, you know, that would graduate to self hate. Or some kind of self depression, or something like that. And lastly, when someone tells you that you must love yourself first, it can feel like if they just if they just say that in a way that is relatively lack in feeling, which you know what I mean. It can feel like they're denying you something essential, like telling someone who is starving for affection, and it's just like oh, just well, just sort out your own feelings first. And 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 I'll come to help you out. That's not helpful. It it sometimes it can even be cruel, depending on the situation. We're just so much more complicated than that. So don't buy into the the myth that you know, self love is an absolute prerequisite for any other kind of love. Love and self love are processes. That happens often together in some sense, not steps to be checked off a checklist in a particular order. And remember, everyone deserves love. But let's assume you're not a, a created criminal or something. No matter where they are, in where anybody is in their journey towards loving themselves, if you are interested in really finding out more happiness. You have to be prepared to both love yourself and accept love from others. It's ridiculous for to for me to think to just cut off one bridge until the other bridge is built. And lastly, of course, don't ever lose hope. But that it get it it can get a lot more complicated than that. I can talk about this stuff for like an hour if I wanted to. But you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect to find love. And of course. Everybody deserves love, and trust me, some of the people you think that have the best and or perfect life, they often have the also the most miserable demons that they are fighting that you have no idea about. Just live your best life, and don't assume you you know everything about everybody. So I'll talk to you guys later. Man, I'm tired. All right, talk to you guys later. <laughs> Cheers.